welcome to my painting demonstration of this handsome guy. This is a head study of my son-in-law that I did for a painting of him and my daughter as a wedding present. I started this painting as a demo for my students as a burnt umber underpainting and finished it up at home in the studio. I started off making some drawing corrections and then dove right into the paint. I start working from the background toward the foreground. The underpainting works as a map for the structure of the painting and as a key to the values. I have a paint it like you mean it from the start mindset when I'm painting. Some people like to block in big areas just to have something down, but if I see a color or a value or a temperature shift, I try to go ahead and put it in as I'm painting. This works especially well if I have an underpainting already there that has my values and my drawing already set down. I don't blend it at this stage. I'm just trying to get the notes of color and the value down. For example, I'll think there's a blue here, there's a darker flesh here, there's kind of a green flesh here. This works particularly well with my organized flesh palette. When I see a similar color note, I can find and adjust it quickly on my palette. I'm not mixing it from scratch, which would interrupt the flow too much to work this way. You can find a video about my flesh color palette here on Patreon. I know that the first pass is most likely not going to be the last pass, but I think the choices I make here in the underneath layers will inform the subsequent layers. They help me get to my final vision. It's kind of like life. You make the best decision you can at any given time and make better decisions as you go based on new discoveries. I continue breaking the planes down into smaller and smaller shapes with more and more specific color. I'm also paying attention to the drawing. I always have the idea in the back of my mind that I'm drawing with the paint rather than filling in a drawing. It's a subtle idea, but an important one especially for getting a good likeness. You can see I'm changing brushes periodically through this time lapse. Here I'm using a silver brush, extra long filberts. They have a natural bristle. They hold a lot of paint, so I use them in the early stages of the painting when I'm just laying down planes and not looking for detail. Here I've switched to a silver brush, Renaissance Cat's Tongue Sable. They're very soft and make a softer, more defined mark. Great for small areas where I'm getting into more detail. Frequently, I mix paint on the canvas. By that I mean I will put a color intentionally on the canvas that I know is not the right color, but I plan to mix it with the color underneath. You can see that happening here where I put a big splotch of bright pink on his cheek and mix it in. As I'm painting the eyes, I'm being very careful with the colors and values, and I make sure that everything has a soft edge. The trick to that is to work wet paint into wet paint in adjacent areas, barely dragging one color into its neighbor. Pay a little attention here to my handling of the eyebrows. I think of them as flesh and bone first rather than hair, so I'm painting the shadows and the light, the underlying structure. Once I get that right, I can suggest the hair of the eyebrows with a fan brush or another natural bristle brush, which makes a messier mark perfect for hair. Here I switch to a fan brush. It makes a great kind of messy mark that works wonderfully for light and reflected light. It makes these bright blue marks sort of sit on top of the hair and the temple and the brow. I drag it over the other colors underneath so lightly that it's not really mixing in.
Sometimes when a painting is being bad, I turn it on its head. But seriously, it's a great idea to turn your painting upside down or look at it in a mirror to get a fresh view. It helps you to see what needs to be done to fix an area that's not exactly working. I know it's getting pretty close to done at this point, so I pull back on my focus and look at everything as a whole. I'm checking both of the eyes at the same time and both of the ears going back and forth looking for symmetry. I'm nudging little bits of paint, softening edges and correcting the shapes and values little by little. Here I take a big brush and drag it across different areas, mostly the background or edges, to soften and break down any hard ledges of paint that might catch the light in an unattractive way. Happy painting! And thank you for subscribing.